Well, I wanted to update you about the apocalyptic wildfires going on in Colorado. Um, you know, the East Troublesome Fire is a separate fire from the Cameron Peak Fire. And right kind of in between those two fires is Rocky Mountain National Park and Estes Park, which is just... <laughs> you know, the biggest vacation town. And part of my childhood, part of my mom's childhood, came under evacuation last night. People were fleeing Estes Park and the traffic was backed up as far as you could see. The towns of Grand Lake, Granby and Estes Park all had evacuations. Grand Lake, a lot of the homes burned down up there, and there are people that are missing, presumed to have died in the fire, an older couple, which is really tragic. Um, sorry, it's been really chilly and cold, and it's supposed to snow this weekend, and hopefully that'll put the fires out. But Yesterday I was doing a report and I decided not to upload it because I did not know that the East Troublesome fire had, you know, just taken off and exploded. I thought that those fires were one and the same, but they are two different fires. And apparently the Left Hand Canyon fire is 100% contained which means they have a perimeter around it and they're trying to you know keep it within the fire lines i'm not really sure about the update on the Calwood fire i think they have a little bit more containment um the temperatures are supposed to drop to 22 degrees over the weekend and possibly anywhere from five to 10 inches of snow in various areas. They're expecting snow to fall over all the fires, which we pray will significantly reduce the terrible situation that's going on. But seeing Estes Park being evacuated last night was very traumatizing to me. And uh, the fact that at 2.38 p.m., I don't know if you saw this on the news, but... Um, the whole sky turned deep orange and they showed a beautiful elk up near Grand Lake trying to take a drink from the lake with gigantic antlers. It was just a beautiful but eerie sight because the orange of the sky was just apocalyptic. Um, anyway, it's, it's turned really cold and... Um, pretty bitter outside and it's going to be getting colder. I think tomorrow's going to be, you know, pretty much turning to rain and snow and Sunday. And I was crying last night because, <clears throat> you know, it says that in the last days, perilous times will come. And to be in peril means to be in imminent danger and you know to just be threatened and and not you know being safe that you're in grave danger and that's really what's going on here they evacuated all these people out of Estes Park a lot of them were taken to the embassy suites in Loveland Colorado which is up highway 35 to the east and herds of elk were also crossing the road. And as the firefighters from Loveland went up Highway 34 up to Estes Park, the sky just turned blood red. And I mean true blood red. It was really frightening. It was 2.38 p.m. when they photographed, you know, going up the hill with the fire truck, you know, with the siren on. And they showed how deep red the sky was. 
it was really terrifying. And some of the firefighters said that it was terrifying. And um, anyway, I'm just kind of cold. That's why I'm wearing my little hood. <laughs> I have so many memories of Estes Park, you know, as a child. And, and even just the last days spent with my mom before she got ill. We went up there on a Mother's Day was our last time up there, and I don't want to see it burned down. And I was just reading, you know, there's a famous hotel that was in um, the movie The Shining, which I'm not into any of those kind of awful movies, but it made the hotel famous, basically, um, the Stanley Hotel. And apparently they're housing like 380 firefighters in that hotel so right now that hotel is in a pretty secure zone where there's no flames or anything and um, they serve the firefighters dinner up there and I believe that on the west side is where there's fire damage of Estes Park probably, you know, like at the edge of Estes Park. I don't know the exact update right now, but as of last night, it was pretty terrifying. I couldn't even sleep. I was so traumatized because all I could think about was, you know, I wanted the park to stay exactly like it was the way my mom last saw it. <laughs> she had been going up there with her family since at least the 50s, you know, and there's just a lot of memories of that particular place. And I know another place where we used to picnic, Maureen Park, that place was in the fire danger zone. <clears throat> and I believe that I just read 206,000 acres in the Cameron Peak Fire. I believe that this... East Troublesome Fire, that's the one threatening Estes Park. They're afraid that it's going to merge with the Cameron Peak Fire, which is only about 10 miles away. They're separated by only 10 miles. And if they combine, there'll be one huge fire. <laughs> um, what was really interesting is I was so distraught about it last night that I just felt like nothing could console me. I prayed and cried and was asking the Lord to please, you know, protect that area and preserve it. And I was kind of wanting to share that, strangely enough, you know, I was thinking about my mom and being up there and just wanting it to stay that way and not be destroyed. And I just couldn't be consoled. And even when I w finally fell asleep and woke up, I, I woke up with tears and prayers. And I checked my phone. And to my complete shock, my camera had turned some of my photographs into a movie. And it happened to choose the pictures that I had of my mother. I don't, really don't know why it did it or how it did it. But when I woke up, I saw this notice that I had a new movie and it gave my mom's name and her maiden name, which I thought was unusual, right there on the screen. And then it just, it made a movie out of every one of the pictures that I have of her in my cell phone. So I watched this movie of my mom and I didn't realize it. I, I had to go back over it a couple of times, but right when I got to the very middle, it was showing clips, like um, video clips that I had taken of her on her last birthday, actually, um, the year before. And right in the middle, I heard my mother say, I love you. And I was saying, I love you. And she said, I love you. <laughs> and I thought, did she just say I love you in this movie? And I went back over it and over it. And yeah, she said, I love you. 
because I told her I loved her on her birthday. And for this video to be created and delivered to me through the photos in my phone somehow, when the only thing that could console me was to see my mom, you know, in the fact that Estes Park is in grave danger, a place that she loved, you know, it was really the only thing that really could bring me back to being okay, you know? I, I really didn't feel okay and really struggling with everything that's been happening. And anyway, I just thought that was kind of a miracle. And, you know, the photograph that kind of stayed on the screen with her name below her picture was the one I took of her, and she was at home in the hospital bed, and, you know, with the oxygen on, and it showed all these pictures, and just her saying, I love you in the middle, almost like God is saying, I'm comforting you with this because I know that how much this means to you, Estes Park, and my mother, and my memories of her there. So I wanted to just kind of share that because it's just another one of those miraculous things that I feel like you know, the Lord did this morning. And, <clears throat> you know, I'm sorry if I look strange with this hoodie on. I know it kind of looks strange. I look like I have black hair or something. <laughs> but, um, you know, I woke up to that, you know, a notification that they had made a new video. And they sent it to me. <laughs> Whoever does that, my phone, you know, just periodically does something like that. And the thing is, is it was, you know, pictures and, uh, you know, the picture I have of me and my mom on my GoFund. That picture was in there, too. And a picture I took of my mom at a fountain when she had her brown hair and... The picture I took of her on Mother's Day with my little face, <laughs> you know, um, well, that one, actually, I took that one um, on her birthday, and one I took of her on Mother's Day on the back porch swing, and she looked so beautiful, and I just thought, how can this be that I get this notification of a video of my mom with her name on it? And, you know, I, I think about her when I think of Estes Park. And I'm really struggling with just dealing with all of the smoke and the fires and the situation I'm in. And, you know, the only thing that could console me this morning, like I said, was just... The fact that God, <laughs> somehow, I got that video. And it was just, oh, yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention about it is that um, it, it had music down below it that you could choose to put on the video. And the very word, when I looked down on which music it was playing, was uplifting and I needed to be uplifted and it said my mom's name her maiden name and then it said uplifting and then it played through all these pictures of her just like somehow a message that I'm not forgotten and that it's just some way of putting her arms around me and deep love. And I'm ever so grateful. 
and thankful. And I just pray that, you know, God would just put these fires out and to help us. And, uh, you know, I found out from my publisher that there's some person that's been buying my books and giving them away to people. And I just pray that everybody's blessed by whoever's doing that. You are a huge blessing. And let me just say right here that people that bash people that have books or PayPal accounts, you know, a lot of times they're making huge assumptions about things that are just not true. The way I got my PayPal account was that Watchmen for that great day decided to come donate something to my channel, and he did it through PayPal, and that set up my account. So just because I have a PayPal account doesn't mean that I'm some money-hungry person. <laughs> and when you write a book, you get very, very little out of the printing of the book. I mean, the vast majority of that money goes to the distributor and the printer. And you have to pay for ink, paper, the binding, and the distribution. And the vast majority of the money actually goes to them. I wanted to set the record straight because there's just Christians that are just bashing other Christians, you know, and they don't know the whole story of everybody's life. You know, a lot of these people that are, you know, pastors you see on TV, it's very expensive to be on any kind of media like television. And they also raise money for charities and orphanages overseas and for fresh water, wells to be dug. So... I think the judgments need to end and people need to stop criticizing other Christians when they don't agree with them, you know, and people just, they're irreconcilable, just like the Bible says, they just don't care anymore. And it's really sad. And, you know, when the whole state of Colorado, basically the whole mountain range has been a blaze and trying to just hold on to the end is very difficult and uh, I really feel like it's a fulfillment of you know the last days perilous times shall come which means dangerous and so anyway I wanted to update you that Estes Park was partially evacuated yesterday starting in the afternoon when the sky was blood red. So just keep me in your prayers. And I just thank you for your support and loving kindness. And um, just thank you for caring. Anyway, I know this isn't the greatest video doing this inside at night but it was really cold out today and I was freezing and I'm really concerned about my stuff in storage units some of it is you know stuff that I it's sensitive to the cold and anyway I'm worried about it so I need prayers and I ask you for your continued love and support thank you so much be praying for Estes Park and the surrounding areas, Granby and Grand Lake, and everybody that's displaced, and the firefighters and their families, of course, and the animals and birds and trees. So anyway, this is just a quick update. Not so quick, I see. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to let you know something drastic happened yesterday and, uh, you know, into the night. And I don't know what the situation is right now, except I think more people were evacuated. So let's just keep everybody in our prayers and keep looking up. 
and keep the faith no matter what. Talk to you later. Signing off for now.